All right, so let's start a new chapter. So today you are going to learn about geometric optics. Okay, so uh, light is an electromagnetic wave. I mean, geometric optics is basically here. I'm going to talk about light, reflection, refraction, this kind of thing. Okay, so we need to learn a little bit of light. Okay, and you probably know that light is an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so although it is a uh, it is a wave in this chapter i am not going to um, use the wave property of the light instead we are going to use the ray model of light okay so uh, that's why i am not going to talk about the uh, the um, the wave okay so here basically we are going to focus on the ray model of light okay so in the next chapter chapter 24 you are going to learn about uh, the wave properties of uh, light okay and i mean uh, if you want to know what is the electromagnetic wave it means it has uh, electric component and magnetic component and we get light or electromagnetic wave when a charge vibrate okay so you know the charge is related to the uh, elect i mean electric charge is related to the electric field Okay, so you see that when we have charge, we we have electric field. But when the charge is moving, we can also have the magnetic field. Okay, so that's why when a charge vibrates, we can have both electric and magnetic field. Okay, and because we get the light from the vibration of the electric charge, okay, that's why it's an electromagnetic wave. Okay, in this simulation, you can see that um, it has electric component and magnetic component. So here you see an antenna, okay? In an antenna, a charge is vibrating, okay? And you see that it has two components. So here, um, the electric component means these red waves, okay? And magnetic components means the, uh, the green waves, okay? And one interesting thing you see that they're perpendicular to each other. Okay, the electric component and the magnetic component are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the direction of the propagation. Okay, that's why it's a transverse wave, okay, which you already learned earlier in physics one. All right, so here I'm not going to talk about the wave. I am going to talk about the ray model of light. So what are rays? Okay, a ray is a straight line that is coming from a source of light. Okay, so for example, here you see we have a source, okay, light source, and this is a ray. Okay, and the light ray can pass through uh, transparent material, for example, air, glass, water. Okay, all right, so now let's uh, learn some property of light rays. Okay, so light ray travels in a straight line. So you see that they can cross. So here you see that two light rays coming from two different sources and they can cross. It doesn't, I mean, it, it will not uh, uh, create a, uh, create any problem. Okay, so it can uh, I mean, cross. Okay. Um, a light ray travel forever. Okay, unless it interacts with matter. Okay. So when it interacts with mat matter, then there are some different kind of phenomena, okay? So in this chapter, we are going to learn reflection and refraction, okay? So there are some other phenomena um, when light interacts with matter, but we are not going to learn scattering and absorption. And there are some other things which are not, which we are not going to learn, okay? So we are basically learn about reflection and refraction, okay? An object is a source of light ray. So you see that for this ob from this object, so infinite number of light are coming out. Okay. And how we see? We see an object by focusing a bundle of rays. So here, this is an example. Okay. All right. So the first thing about um, uh, different phenomena uh, is the reflection. Okay, so now we are going to learn about reflection. Okay, so what is reflection? 
All right. So when light strikes the surface of an object, some of the light is reflected. Okay. So here you see important thing is some of the light is reflected. Okay. What about the rest? The rest can be absorbed by the object or and transformed to thermal energy. Or if the object is transparent like glass or water, okay, it can be transmitted through. Okay. So when it is transmitted through it, we call it refraction which you are going to learn in the next lecture, okay? So today we are basically focused on um, reflection and we are not going to um, talk about the thermal energy, how it is transformed into thermal energy, okay? So we are basically focused on two simple phenomena. One is reflection. Reflection means uh, reflect, uh, I mean the reflected ray. I mean, when light ray strikes on, on some surface, some part of the light is reflected from that surface okay and there is another phenomenon which you are going to learn in the next lecture that is part of the light is also transmitted through the medium okay that is the refraction okay so reflection and refraction so today's focus is only reflection okay now if a surface is uh, uh, is a smooth and polished like a silver silver mirror okay silvered mirror so more than 95 percent of the light reflects okay so we already know that i mean uh, for example if you um, uh, if you stand in front of a bathroom mirror you can see the reflection okay all right so now let's learn uh, more about reflection okay so to understand this okay because it is a geometric optics so we need to understand some geometry here okay all right so let's say this is our surface or uh, mirror okay and let's say the source is somewhere here and this is the ray that is striking the surface mirror surface okay and after reflection this is the reflected ray so this is the incident ray Incident ray means the ray coming from the source, striking the surface, okay? And this is the reflected ray. The reflected ray is uh, the ray that is, um, uh, I mean, that is that we are getting after reflection, okay? And another thing you need to understand is the normal, okay? So geometry, from geometry, you already know that normal means a line perpendicular, okay? So here you see this line, this dotted line is perpendicular to the surface, okay? So that's why we call it normal, okay? All right. Now, all reflection follow some rule and we call that law of reflection, okay? Law of reflection tells us that always this angle and this angle are the same, okay? So the angle, the incident light ray makes with the normal, we call it angle of incidence, and um, the angle that reflected light ray makes with the normal, we call it angle of reflection or the reflected angle, okay? They are always equal. So this is the law of reflection. Theta R, okay, is the angle of reflection equal to theta I, which is angle of incidence, okay? So you can see this here, okay? So here we have a laser, okay? Okay, so here basically both uh, reflection and refraction are showing okay so here i'm just talking about the reflection so ignore um, ignore uh, uh, so ignore uh, this ray uh, the ray passing through the water okay so here you see that the top one is water okay the top surface is water and this this one sorry top one is air okay and the bottom the blue one is water okay so here you see that okay so uh, instead of water let me um, make it glass okay so now you see that it is a little bit purple light purple okay so this is glass okay so the white is um, air and the purple is the glass and 
for the time being, ignore the light passing through the glass. Okay, that is basically the refraction that you are going to learn in the next class. Okay, here just focus on the two ray on the uh, on the uh, on the air. Okay, so you see that this in this light. Okay, this laser uh, gives us an incident ray, and after reflection. Uh, we get a reflected ray, okay? So this is the dotted line is the normal, okay? So this is the incidence and you see that when you change the incident ray, okay? The reflected ray, the angle of reflection is also changes, okay? So here you see that for example, angle of reflection here looks like 30 degree and uh, after, sorry, angle of incidence is 30 degree. And after reflection, you see that the angle of reflection is also 30 degree. Okay, and that makes sense. That is the, uh, that is the uh, law, law of reflection. Okay, now if you change it, so make it 40 degree. So you see now it is also 40 degree. Okay, if it is 60 degree, again, sorry, if it is 50 degree, it is 50 degree. If it is 60 degree, it is 60 degree. So always theta r equal to theta i, okay? So that is the angle of, ref uh, sorry, the law of reflection, okay? Theta r is equal to theta i, okay? Now, there are two types of reflection. One is called specular re reflection, another is diffuse reflection, okay? So in a specular reflection, normally we get from a smooth surface. So for example, if you have a mirror, okay? polished mirror, we get almost specular reflection. Specular reflection means parallel light strikes the surface and after reflection, they are also parallel. Okay. Now, most of the surface are not uh, smooth, right? If you look at microscopically, you will see that they are not that smooth. Okay. They are rough, something like these. Okay. So, if the surface is rough, after reflection, they are not parallel. The reflected rays are random, okay? So something like this. So here you see the parallel light strikes the surface, okay? And after reflection, they follow randomly. I mean, not randomly, they follow some direction depending on the uh, law of reflection. I mean, this law, okay? So, um, so this kind of reflection we call the diffuse reflection, okay? So no matter whether it is a specular reflection or diffuse, diffuse reflection, they always follow the, uh, the law of reflection. For example, here, this is, uh, this, this is the ray, reflected ray, because if you draw a normal here, you will see that this angle and this angle is the same. Okay, now for these, for the second one, for example, this one, you see the angle of reflection uh, incidence is different than this one. Okay, so because it is different, because they're different, the reflected angle should be different. And that's why, that's why we see this kind of um, diffuse reflection. Okay. All right. Now let me talk about the plane mirror. Okay, so bathroom mirror is a plane mirror, right? So um, we know that. Now, in the bathroom mirror, what we see is basically our image. Okay, so in mirror, in not only in plane mirror, so next I'm going to talk about the spherical mirror. So in all kind of mirror, images are formed by reflection. Okay, so remember that in all kind of mirror, images are formed by reflection okay following the law of reflection okay and in the next chapter i mean in the next lecture you will see that i mean you will learn lens okay and refraction okay so in lens images are formed by refraction so two different thing one is mirror one is lens in mirror image formed by reflection in lens image formed by refraction okay we should remember that and you know that we use the glass and then um, in microscope telescope, we use the lens. Okay, so glass, the eye glasses are, are some kind of lens. Okay, so we'll be learning uh, it in the next lecture. So how the image formed in a plane mirror? So let's say we have this object. Okay, 
So as you learn in the first slide, that object is the source of light ray, right? So you see that, I mean, if you use, I mean, it is the source of infinite number of light rays. So if I draw infinite number of light rays, it will be messy and it will be difficult to understand. So whenever we talk about the image, we basically draw few lines, few rays, okay? A few from the top top of the object, few from the bottom of the object. So here you see from the top, we draw two rays. From the bottom, we draw two rays, okay? Normally we do this kind of thing, okay? Now you see that these two rays, okay, after reflection, they go in this direction, right? So this is the plane mirror, okay? After reflection, uh, one is this one, another is this one. Following the, okay, this ray basically follows the, um, the law of reflection and the same thing for this one okay so uh, in fact for one of the ray we show that the angle of incidence and angle of reflection okay and this is the normal for that for that ray okay so now if we extend all the reflected ray we see something like this okay so you see that the top meet to um, the rays that is reflected okay meets here and the bottom meets here okay and if we connect all the rays all the infinite number of rays you basically form this image okay so you see that in a plane mirror images form on the other side of the mirror okay so this is the front side where you are okay this is the behind okay so if the image formed behind the mirror we call it virtual image okay and virtual image is always upright okay so upright means um, straight so if it is uh, uh, if it is this okay the direction is also this so if it is for uh, object um, the image is also straight okay we call it upright okay in some cases you will see that image is something like this <clears throat> so image is something like this okay object is this image is this okay so we call it inverted but for plane mirror so let's now focus only on the plane mirror so in the plane mirror image is on the other side Okay, other side of the mirror, if it is on the other side, we call it virtual image and virtual image is always upright. So it's very similar to uh, the direction is uh, similar to the object. Okay, and another thing is the distance of the object from the mirror, that is DO, DO means distance of the object from the mirror is equal to the distance of the image from the mirror. So DO and DI are the same for a plane mirror. Okay. So here you can see that. Okay. Even better in this simulation. So here we have a candle. Okay. So you see that on the right hand side, we have the object. Okay. And uh, again, uh, you see that we just use few uh, rays some from the top, some from the bottom. And then you see that if you follow the law of reflection, you can draw the, the reflected rays, okay? And if you extend the reflected rays, you see on the left-hand side, we form the image, okay? And for a plane mirror, you see it's basically the same size. The image size is exactly equal to the object size, okay? And also the distance is same. So if the distance um, is one meter or half meter uh, from the mirror, I mean, if the object is about half meter from the mirror, the image will be half meter from the mirror. Okay, so remember that. And yeah, and uh, yeah, so here, because the image is on the other side, okay, uh, we call it virtual image, okay? All right, now there are two other kind of mirrors, okay? One is, uh, okay, so they are both spherical mirrors. So one we call the convex mirror, another is concave mirror, okay? So for example, spherical in a spherical mirror, okay, uh, reflection can happen in this side 
or in this side okay so if reflection happen in this side outer side we call it convex mirror so if it is in inner side we call it concave mirror okay so you see that in a, a convex mirror so this is the uh, incident ray and after reflection this is the uh, reflected ray and uh, for a concave mirror so you see this is the uh, the reflected ray okay and in both cases they should follow the law of reflection okay so now let's learn about more uh, learn more about the spherical mirrors okay but before we do that let me show you some of the example where we use the spherical mirror okay so for example the shop mirror so you probably see in some supermarket um, uh, this kind of mirror okay so this is uh, convex mirror okay so in the road side if you see this kind of mirror so these are the these are again the convex mirror okay so the reflection happen on the outer side and also the car rear view mirrors are uh, convex mirror okay on the other hand the cosmetic mirrors okay are all uh, concave mirror so for example uh, the bar, this row shows all concave mirror okay all right so another interesting example is a spoon okay so you can use the spoon both as a concave mirror or convex mirror okay so one side of a spoon is a concave and another side is a convex mirror okay try it uh, uh, i mean if you um, have a polished spoon at home okay all right and you see that the images are different in different side okay so one is upside down okay so upside down means uh, so you see that this is upright same as the object so this kind of uh, image is the virtual image okay and this kind of image is real image so you are going to learn about a real image which is upside down okay all right, so before we um, learn about um, real and virtual image in a spherical uh, mirror, let's learn some terminology, some terms, okay? For example, you need to learn focal point and focal length, okay? Parallel rays, okay? A radius of curvature, so something like this. So let's learn about these, okay? Okay, so uh, before all that, so we should know that when light comes from a distance object we can treat the rays from a distance object as parallel rays okay so for example this is a distance object this tree is a distance object for this small mirror okay now you see if we think about this point okay from this point infinite number of light rays uh, light rays um, coming out okay and you see because the mirror of our interest in the, in this chapter are very small so you see that the the rays that hits this uh, mirror okay this rays uh, this ray and this ray are look like very parallel to each other okay so so that's why when we have a small mirror and when we have the obj when we have a distance ob object okay uh, we can treat the ray from the distance object as parallel rays. Okay. All right. Now, um, when parallel rays strikes the uh, mirror, so for example, let's consider this example. Okay. So here you see the all parallel rays strikes the uh, mirror. Okay. And after reflection, they meet at a point. Okay. This point. Okay. So when the parallel ray strikes in a mirror, after reflection, they meet at one point, okay? And it happens when the rays are parallel. And this point we call the focal point, okay? The focal point is where the, I mean, after reflection, um, they meet, okay? And the distance from this focal point to the center of this mirror, we call the uh, the focal length and we use small f to represent focal length okay and now because this is a part of a spherical mirror okay and if we consider the whole mirror 
it has some radius right it has some center okay and the center of the sphere okay for, is we uh, i mean we call the center of car curvature okay and from the center to the cent i mean the this center to this center we call the um, the radius of curvature okay so the radius of the sphere is basically the radius of the curvature and there is a relation between the radius of curvature and the focal focal length okay so focal length is always half of the radius of curvature so the relation is this okay and this line we call the principal axis the line that connects the center okay center of the sphere focal point and this this center we call it principal axis okay all right so here i show it for um, okay so in this example i show it for a concave mirror it's very similar to the convex mirror so this is the convex mirror okay so here you see that in this case you see that the after reflection they meet at a point or converge at a point okay but on the other hand for um, convex mirror it looks like they are diverging from this point if you extend the reflected ray okay so it looks like they are diverging from this point so that's why sometimes we call uh, it converging mirror and we call it diverging mirror okay and for the diverging mirror or the convex mirror yeah so this is the focal length okay and this is the radius of curvature okay and you see it is on the other side okay so our object is somewhere here okay and you see that the focal length and the radius of curvature is on the other side all right so we will be learning more about this in the next slide but before i go there let me uh, talk about when uh, if we have a big mirror so now we are talking about very small mirror okay so if you have a big mirror for example in telescope we use big mirror okay so if we use a big mirror so after reflection the parallel rays normally do not uh, meet at one point so here you see that they meet at the different points okay so if we have something like this i mean the image is not so sharp okay so image is blurry in this case okay so this kind of thing we call spherical aberration okay and to get a sharp image we need to correct for spherical aberration i mean there is a way to do that but here i'm not going to i mean in this chapter we are not going to learn about the big mirror okay and uh, that's why i'm not going to teach uh, about spherical aberration okay all right so maybe in chapter 25 we may learn little bit about spherical aberration okay when we learn about telescope and some other uh, optical instrument okay all right so we already see how the image formed in a plane mirror okay but for a spherical mirror it's very it's little bit different okay and uh, i'm here going to show it for um for concave mirror for con convex mirror it's almost same okay all right so three thing you need to understand okay for spherical mirror first one okay the first one so if a ray is parallel to the principal axis for example this one is parallel to the principal axis so if a ray is parallel to the principal axis after reflection it goes through the focal point so you see that after reflection it goes through the focal point okay number two if it is if it goes through the focal point okay after reflection it is parallel to the uh, it is parallel to the principal axis so one and two are basically um, opposite of each other okay one is um, incoming ray is parallel after reflection it is going through the focal point and number two tells us that if the ray incoming ray is going through the focal point after reflection it will be parallel to the principal axis okay hard one is the if the ray is going through the center center of the 
curvature center of the sphere so for example this one so if the ray is so so here um okay so here this is the object right so this is the object okay so we see these and then these and then these and these okay so one and two is easy to understand number three is this one so if the ray is going this okay so if the incoming ray is this and you see this incoming ray is basic if you extend it it going through the uh, the center of the sphere okay so if the if it is going through the center of the sphere it uh, after i mean after reflection it follow the same path so it it basically after reflection it follows the same path and that's because it is the normal so when we have a sphere okay so all radius are the normal for the sphere for example okay so this is normal for this 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 so you know that the law of reflection tells us that when reflected ray okay so so here you see that if if it is at this point it come back in the same direction okay so that's why here you see that when it is uh, through the center okay it follows the same line okay now you see that the, the three reflected rays meet somewhere here uh, so three reflected ray meet somewhere here okay so the image will produced here so this is the image okay and in this case you see that the object and image both are in the same side okay so this kind of image we call real image okay and real image is always inverted okay inverted means upside down so you see that before um, uh, i mean object is uh, like this okay and after reflection the image is upside down okay so it is inverted image okay all right okay so now uh, the important thing to understand is the mirror equation okay so here i derive it please go through it i'm not going to um, discuss how i derive it so please go through it it's, it i basically use the geometry to to derive it go through it and if you have question let me know okay i'm just going to discuss the final equation okay so the mirror equation basically connects the image distance object distance and the focal length okay so here you see di is the image distance do is the object distance and f is the focal length okay all right and the magnification okay so i mean magnification means uh, um, how much uh, magnified the image compared to the object okay and it can be determined using these two equation okay so in the first here you see it is the ratio of image height and object height in the second you see uh, that it is the negative of ratio of image distance and object distance okay so you have to remember that for this one we have a negative sign for this one we do not have a negative sign okay all right so i mean um, yeah in fact i am going to give you the equation list okay these two equation will be there okay so although these two equation will be there you have to understand and remember the sign convention that i am going to tell you next okay but before i do that let me talk a little bit about the plane mirror okay so this equation is valid for all mirror or no matter it is a spherical or plane mirror okay but for plane mirror the focal length is equal to infinity okay because it is not spherical that's why um, um, focal length is infinity okay so if you plug f equal to infinity in the mirror equation what you get is um, 1 over di plus 1 over d0 equal to 0 and if you solve it you get di equal to minus d0 i mean do okay so that means 
the distance i i mean image distance is equal to object distance but in the other side of the mirror okay so i mean you already see it right so for example uh here okay so you see that for plane mirror it is on the other side that's why we use a negative sign okay all right now the important thing is to understand the sign convention okay so the first one the image height hi is positive if the image is upright so you see that image could be upright or inverted okay so if it is upright same as the object then we use a positive sign if it is inverted we use a negative sign okay so for example here uh, so here you see that image is um, inverted so in this case we have to use uh, image height negative okay so image height height is negative remember that okay and this is relative to the object okay assuming the object is always positive okay so if if object is positive if image is something like this then image height is negative so the sign for hi will be negative okay if object is this and image is this then the sign will be positive okay so this is object so you see that normally uh object is positive okay and there is some complicated case which i'm not going to do in this course okay so for our case most of the time object is positive i mean object height is positive so image image height is negative if it is inverted if it is upright it is positive so this is one convention remember that and here we just talk about the image height not the image distance or the object distance okay the next one is the image and object distance okay di or d0 so uh, do is always positive again because we have the control so we can put uh, the image wherever we want okay so that's why Im uh, object is always object distance is always positive normally okay and again yeah, there are some complicated case which we are not going to do it in this in this course okay or maybe we will do one one problem at least okay so normally do is positive okay because do is always in front of the mirror okay if it is always in front of the mirror then um it is positive okay now you see already that image can be formed in front of the mirror or behind the mirror okay so if it is in front of the mirror then we use a positive sign for the image okay so here you see di or do is positive if the image or the object is in front of the mirror so if it is in front of the mirror we use a positive sign if it is behind the mirror the uh the distance is negative so remember that now the focal length is positive for concave mirror or converging mirror and negative for convex mirror or diverging mirror so remember that this this convention also so f is positive for concave mirror or converging mirror negative for diverging or convex mirror okay now i already mentioned that but yeah let me tell you again if the image is behind the mirror we call it a virtual image and virtual image is always upright and if the image is in front of the mirror, we call it real image and real image is always uh, inverted. Okay. And another thing, concave mirror or converging mirror can produce both images, whereas convex mirror can produce only virtual image. Okay. Let me show it here. Okay. So, so you see that this time the light is going from this side. Okay. So that means it is convex mirror okay so it is reflecting from the outer side okay so now you see that what i mean no matter where you place the object okay it is always the image is always other side of the mirror okay and it is always upright okay so other side means it is virtual okay so we get virtual image and upright virtual image is always upright 
okay now here you see the uh, equation okay so the first one one over four nine you see that object distance okay object distance is always positive the image on the other side okay here 0 0.64 is on the other side that's why it's a negative and because it is a convex mirror so we have to use the focal length negative so here the focal length is negative one okay on the other hand for concave mirror you will see that both kind of image possible okay so here now you see this is real image real image is uh, inverted but virtual image is also possible so here you see that virtual image okay and here you see that real image okay so for this mirror concave mirror we can have both real and virtual image okay for real image you see the distance image dis object distance and image distance both are uh, positive and the focal length is of course is positive but for virtual image so you see that for virtual image uh, the image distance is negative okay so all right so that's basically it in the next class uh, i'm going to talk about refraction and lenses okay that's it for today